Coming from a family that had a member of it with a long-term career in law enforcement, I always had some confidence that the job was being done correctly because my old man, a member of my family, who was a copper for a great number of years, took great pride in doing his job properly. The Ways and Means Act, he used to call it, and he complained like hell when things started to change, and him and other members of the police of his generation have since proved to be absolutely correct. And when I read stories like what I have just, which I'm about to bring to you, I do wonder, where have we gone so terribly wrong? How do everyone? Welcome back to the channel for a Wednesday. Hope you're doing all right. Well, I certainly am. I'm going to get my head down soon. Anyway, police. Policing criminal justice. My old man, I mentioned him at the beginning of the video, said the worst thing that's probably happened to policing in this country is the CPS because everything has to be justified to them before you prosecute. And uh, we have a very liberal way of thinking in this country now where the idea of justice is watered down. You see debates all the time about whether certain measures should be brought back for certain crimes. And I believe if it's proved beyond a reasonable doubt, which is the key thing, perhaps they do. Well, we move on to the subject. Over 30 years ago, a gentleman by the name of Colin Pitchfork was sent to prison for life for the rape and murder of two 15-year-old kids. Absolutely disgusting. You imagine a family losing a child of that age. No parent should bury their child, particularly in those circumstances. And that piece of filth should have gone away for life. We all saw in the news fairly recently all the debate over whether he should be let out at all because he'd done about 30 years and he was up for parole and there was an attempt at stopping it from happening because of the severity of the crimes he committed. Well, as we know, he was released. And when you're let out, you have to be put somewhere. Check this out. Whether we like it or not, and I'm sure there's a great many members of this channel believe that release from prison or even going to prison at all, really, that punishment did not fit the level that the crime that was committed. But we have a situation where he's been released. When they're released, you have to put them somewhere, like it or not. And they walk among us in our communities with new names and new identities. In the case of Pitchfork, he was housed in a hospital very, very near some schools and a couple of nurseries with young kids. Yeah, unbelievable, isn't it? The crime he committed, and that's where he goes. Now, there's several alarm bells clanging in my head right now. One, why there? Probably housing shortages. Maybe the dinghy divers coming over mean there's not so many places to stay, who, who knows? But what incompetent idiot in that office decided to house him there? He may have changed his ways, but I've been told by police officers that people that behave like that, generally something like it happened to them in the past, and you have to wonder whether they do change their ways. So why take the risk of putting him in a setting where there's schools and nurseries nearby? Could history repeat itself? Some idiot who made this decision needs to be held to account for it because, all right, he was released, but he should not have been put there. Anywhere else, but not there. Let me know what you think in the comments. I'm disgusted. The families are furious, and rightly so, and I should imagine anybody who realises the identity of this man near their children 
are equally worried also. Not a good day for criminal justice in this country, is it? And it's one of many stories we see week on week on week. Despicable. This is a Gabby Cabby signing off. Toodaloo.